So, man cavers, we are back again with our Jap generator. So, what we're going to have a look at today is we're going to. I have ordered engine parts before we start. I've ordered a head gasket. I found on Evil Bay, I found some new old stock, genuine Jap stuff, a new head gasket, and a new piston and rings at a very reasonable price. So I've got them ordered. So engine side, we're leaving for a minute. What we are going to do today, we're going to try and get this cover off and have a look in this generator end. And then we'll get the generator and the engine off the bed plate. And yeah, we'll just have a look and, you know, see what everything's like. Roll the credits. Ah. Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. So, first order of business, see if we can get these two screws. Can you actually see this? There you go. We're going to try and get these two screws. Let's get you end on out of here. See if we can get these screws out. They might be interesting. Because they look quite bad. But we shall see, won't we? We shall see. Thank you very much for all your comments on this yesterday. I did read every single one. But it's getting to the stage where I'm getting... I love getting the comments, but I'm struggling to find the time to actually reply to them all. But I do read every single one. Thank you very much. And thank you for the people that have given me the input on this. Maybe a bit of information. Ah, oh, what's going on here? These screws are well and truly... I think they want cleaning out. These, are, these screws are quite badly burred. So this might not come. Let me get a bigger screwdriver. Yeah, we'll put a bigger end in. I think that might want a bigger end. Ah, ah. Oh, this one's coming, look. Look at that. No, I think I got to come right out, ain't they? Yep. I didn't know there was a slotted hole in there, so that actually slots, but there isn't. Well, this one's coming out. Oh, yes. In our little tray. What about this end? Cool. These are quite bad. Come on. Oh, look at that. Coming out and all that. I think I say this on every video, but this old stuff normally always come apart you know it can be years and it'll still come apart look at that that wall just oh my where a big old spider in there now look at him in there look yeah get on the floor sunshine right he's gone in the floor and gone under the bench i do not like spiders right let's have a look in here we have more webs quite a few webs there's, yeah, how do these brush, I want to check the brushes. Now, ah, here they are, look. All right, let's get it shifted around a bit. Oh, quite a heavy little sod, you know. Yeah, we'll get that shifted around a bit, and then you can have a closer look inside here. Where are our brushes? There's a spring here, look. I'm assuming we pull this spring back and our brushes will come out. There they are. What are they like? Oh, there's tons of meat on them. Look at all the meat on them brushes. And do you know that's actually still quite shiny? I'll show you in there. Look at that. There you go. Is this brush free as well? Let me just check this other brush, make sure they're not seized up. 
or anything stupid like that. I don't think they're going to be seized up. Uh, that's this this spring back as well. Good job I checked this brush. This brush is actually seized in its holder look. Don't shoot me. I know you shouldn't do that. Yep, this brush is seized in the holder. Damn good job I checked this now, isn't it? Let me squirt a bit of penetrating spray in there. We've had this one out, so we know that's good. But this brush... I don't want to pull on the wire too hard, because I don't want to pull the wire out the brush. I think what I've got to do... All right, I'm going to turn this round a bit, and then I can hopefully grab it with a set of pin nose pliers. Gently. All right, ain't got a tip off, is it? All right, show you guys in here. There we go. Right, our brush is in the bottom here. And it is stuck. Very stuck, actually. Did that come out of the middle of that holder? Let me just look at this side. Right, that comes out the middle of this holder. There we go. This brush is perfect, look. But it was stuck in that holder, so the likelihood is... The spring would not have been able to give it enough tension to actually push it down. There you go, that's free again. Perfect. So we can now take our spring out. There we go. Let me show you that ring, that slip ring. I know a lot of you guys are probably going to say, well, they should be shiny. Well, that ain't too bad, look. Can you see in there? It actually looks surprisingly clean and shiny. So I'm quite happy with that. What I will do, I shan't do it on camera because that's a fiddly damn job. I will get a tiny screwdriver and scrape right down there in between each one of them copper segments, them brass segments. We just want to scrape in there just to clean any carbon out. And then, yeah, that will do. So, this end, it seems, is quite good. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Will that grease nipple come out of there? <sighs> There's obviously adjuster screws here, so you can adjust the stator. Why you'd want to do that, I'm really not sure. But... I'm sure the generator builders amongst you will tell me why you need to adjust this state or why that's on slotted holes. I have no clue, because it looked like the brushes stay in the same orientation. You're just adjusting the whole thing. Why? I do not know. There isn't four brushes in there. There isn't another two around the other side, is there? Nope. So there's only these two. And there you go. They're actually sliding. There you go. In and out of their holes now. Look, one... Okay, so brushes are doing what they're meant to do. That one was seized, so that certainly wouldn't help to this thing actually producing power. There we go. There. Right, what are we doing? I think we can be putting this thing back where it belongs. Around this way. Ugh. And try and get these bolts off. See if we can get this thing pulled out of here. I don't know how this engine couples how this engine couples to this generator. There is an Allen key here and an Allen key there. 
but I have a sneaky feeling all they do is lock this half to the generator shaft and this half to the engine shaft. I assume there's some sort of male-female connection in there. You know what I mean? Like a cross or a slot. So these actually fit the, or even a spline. There's got to be something what just hold these together. Because there's nothing physically bolting one to the other. And I can't see that these screws there, I think all they do is hold the individual halves onto their respective shafts. Uh, there we go. All right, let's have a look and see if we can be getting this off here. Oh, damn me. Heavy little sod, isn't it? All right, let me get a spanner. All right, here we go. We have a 13 mil spanner, which fits. And it's coming undone. Is there a nut on the bottom of that? I can't feel. Do you know, I think that's threaded directly into the bed plate. Wow, that is a lot easier than having to hold a spanner on the bottom as well. Look at that. Yeah. Well, it looks like these are going to come out. So we'll probably forward through this bit while I take these four bolts out. Because that's not very exciting for you guys, is it? There you go, there's our bolt. Right. Oh, that's coming undone, look at that. Shame I can't get a rat to all the windy gun on there, innit? <laughs> Back in a minute, guys. There we go. Generator end off. Right. Well, that ain't off, but you know what I mean. Generator end unbolted. Can we now separate these? Ah, look at that. Well, there's a spring in there, look. Look at that. There you go. You wonder what hold these together. There's a spring couple in there, look. I wondered what coupled these together. That spring, that spring just sits in, ah, that locks in, look. Oh, yeah, I see, there's a, there's a cup what the spring sits in, look. That's obviously to take out dampening of vibrations. Ah, clever stuff. There we go. Well, that actually sounds really nice. This generator end is really quiet. Excellent stuff. All right, I'm happy with that. That seems to have got the generator off. Ah. Oh, that's got to be a little bit easier to handle now she's in bits. There we go. Now we can be getting the engine end off. I think what we ought to do beforehand is drain the oil out of this engine. Is there any oil? Because that's one thing I never done yesterday. Check oil. Do you know that's full of clean oil, look. That oil does not even look black. Let me get a clean tub. And we'll see how clean this oil is. Look. Because it looked to me. Can you see from there? You'll see. It looked to me like this oil. Is remarkably clean. Here we go. Come on little Jack. No, nope, that's going to spill. 
All right, get that on there. There we go. Oh, she's heavy, little bugger. There we are. That oil is surprisingly clean. Got oh, loads of viscosity in it. That is really good. I'm happy with that. Really, really happy with that. Excellent. So I think we need to put our dipstick back in. And then we can take this engine off. And maybe disassemble this bed plate because it needs painting. We've got to get this bed plate prepared for paint. Now it looks to me we can tip this engine up now. Minding that carburetor. Is there nuts on the bottom? No. No. How the hell is that? There's no... There's no nuts on the bottom of that, look. You can't see in there, but believe me, look, there's no... All I can think of is... There's definitely nuts there. There must be studs welded onto this plate. Mm. Well, that certainly make it a one-spanner job to get these off, doesn't it? Yeah, they're coming undone as well, look. That is, you know, this is a different size damn spanner to the other side. Would you believe that? It's a different size spanner. There you go. we got the right size spanner now. I probably could have actually buzzed these off with the windy, but by the time I've got all the windy set up and the socket all out, there's only four of them, and you wouldn't get to this one with a windy anyhow. So you'd get all that set up to probably take two of them out, and you've got to use a spanner for the other two anyhow. We might as well just use a spanner all together. Well, weren't that good that that bell end come off that generator? Did I just say bell end on camera? You know what I mean, the generator bell, the bell end. Well, it is a bell end, isn't it? <clears throat> Stop that sniggering. But yes, that came off there nicely, and our generator actually looked quite clean in there, but so I will get the little tiny screwdriver and scrape in there, because I know they've got to be, I'm no generator expert by a long shot, but I know they have to be meticulously clean. All right, let's turn him round and get these other two out. We're off. There's our bed plate. Standing up there now. And we've got our engine off. Excellent stuff. Well, there we go. That is our engine off the bed plate. She's all looking good. See, this entire engine is blue. Somebody said... Did the, was it the boat division, Navy, did the Navy have the blue engine models? I say somebody actually, oh, who was it? Somebody actually written a comment last night, what all the, what all the things stood, I couldn't actually read the comment now, Mrs. Mankay see it and said, oh, someone's told you what the thing is, but that didn't come up in my comments, I couldn't see it. But it was something to do with WD would be Water Vision and RN would be Royal Navy or something like that. And I wonder if the blue is water. I don't know. Why is the rest of it green? Unless this is a replacement engine someone's put on. Oh, look at that oil cap moving. Where she's losing compression, she's breathing into the crankcase due to all that 
all that slop in the piston yeah that ain't the crank hitting on the dipstick that is just crankcase compression look and we ain't even got a plug or a head in it up there so we got sort of ambient pressure up there unbelievable that right what do we do now I reckon I haven't got to do anything with this. See this block here, this valve block is green. Isn't it? See this valve block on here, this breather? Pretty sure there's a gauze in there. What we can do is, while we're out here doing this, we can take this off. I'm pretty sure there's a gauze in there for crankcase breather. So we'll take these two screws out. That's the screws out. Yeah, there's a gauze in there, look. Crankcase breather. But that's green, look. Yeah, I reckon this engine's been replaced, you know. Yeah, there's a little one-way valve in there as well. To allow the engine to breathe. Yeah, and that scr top screw hole is where that screw for that tin work go in, look. So there's a hole right through there. That's where that piece of tin work goes through. Screw goes through into the tin work. Look at all that dust and crud down the back there. So we're going to blow that out with our compressed air. Let me get Mr. Airline out. Where are you, Mr. Airline? I had you last night, didn't I? Oh, I've brought this end. Up. Let's give him a blowout. What the hell? Oh. sump comes off so we can actually take our piston out which is good don't you put these two screws so things don't get lost or muzzled we're going to just put them back someone told me when you take a screw out put the bugger back I was taught that years ago so you don't forget where it go or lose it and there's no reason for that to be off so we'll temporarily put that back on. There we go. And we'll buzz that sump off. Take that head off. And see if we can get that piston out of there. I don't want to damage this HT lead. Carburetor. Do you know, I think we're going to rest this engine about. And risk breaking that carb. Now to get these carbs off, we have to undo this lock nut. Separate the carb, because the carb won't turn actually on there, because that'll hit. So we've actually got to take the carb to pieces, then we can take the manifold off and the whole carb will come off. Oh, it's coming undone as well, look. I'll show you what I mean. Because we want to clean this carb out, and there should be a brass ball in there from memory. I'm pretty sure these little... Amal carbs or whatever they make they are now, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure they just have a little brass ball in them for your fluid fuel level. 
I see someone's made a handmade gasket. Is there a little ball in there? Here he is. Little brass ball, look. What's that carb like inside? Ain't bad, actually. I've seen a heck of a lot worse. Right. We need to get this throttle linkage out of the way. I'm putting all my tin work into here. Now we want to get this throttle linkage out of the way. And then we can be twisting this carb off. Whew. Yeah, this ain't never been out of here. Come on. Come on. You're coming. Yeah, that's like a awkward little pin which hasn't really been bent over so it's a case of giving her a little twist and a turn till she comes out she'll come there we go There you go, that's got them disconnected, look. There we go, there's that little pin I was telling you about. That just goes on this carb. So we can leave that connection on there. We need to undo this big lock nut. Hopefully that'll undo. Should do. Where is my... Big adjustable. Here it is. I had that this morning. Ah, it's pretty much set the right size though. There we go. Will this undo? Cool. Yep. Now once that's loose, I think this carb will just twist out. There you go. She's unscrewed out of the headlock. Perfect. So there's our carb. There's our engine. This lock can stay there. So I'm not taking that governor rod off because I don't want to have to readjust a governor on a generator. No, 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 no. All right, let us. Let's just get these bolts back out. These ones here. go head off again there you go. right so now we need to just ah, turn this engine upside down that'll probably leak oil everywhere but We've let as much out as we can for the minute. We'll just buzz these crank bolts out if we can get them. What size are they? And can you even get a socket on them? Oh, I think if we blow out... Oh, there's a bit of crud got around the back there. Let's blow that out. And I think we'll be able to get a socket on them. sockets on them. Right. Let me find the appropriate sized socket. I'm going into my Whitworth stuff now. Look oh, way too big. Way too big. Too small. C. 
seems too small. Next size up. What on earth size do they use on these? Right, let's try spanner. See if we can just slacken them with a spanner. Then we can do the rest of them with a screwdriver, can't we? Will they slacken? Ah, that one's coming. <laughs> right, that's one. Will they slacken off? Well, that one's coming. So these should come off because they, they haven't really got any weather under here. So that one's loose. This one's loose. Nope. No, we have got to get a socket on there to undo them. I'm going to try this one. There we go. I hate using sockets that aren't quite the right size. There you go, she's gone in. She was a bit tight in that side. There we go. Get the windy on there. Get the little rattle going on. See if that'll got the grunt. There we go. There we go. That's that one out. That's that one. That one. There we go. So we can now get our sump and our splasher out there we go sump and drip tray out there's some run gasket material been put around there but there is a nice original gasket there which i absolutely love there you go i don't know why somebody had put orange compound seal around there there's no need for it all right and there is in our engine. There you go. There's our engine. And there's our conrod. So if we can do this. We want to get them split pins out of there. And see if we can get them big end bolts undone. Let me get in here and try and try and get these split pins right. Aha! I think we've got that one. I think that's bending out. Oh, there ain't quite enough of it to grip onto. Not quite. Let me try pin those pliers that ain't got the angle on them. Ah, no, that hadn't bent it out. That had just pushed it down. Right, okay, I got it. Let me 
try this other side because this one's been a pain. I can actually see in there. It might look like I can't see in there, but I can. I do have quite a good light above me. So up here, there's a tube light above me. So that's giving me good view down into there. Ah, there we go. That's bending it straight. Right, now I can get hold of it to bend it straight. There you go. And hopefully... Ah, we've got one coming. There you go, there's one. We've just got this other one now. Ah, there's the little part ah, bent upwards. Well, that's why that wouldn't come. All right, that's loose because I can feel it. It just isn't quite giving me enough to grab onto. There we go, she's coming. Yep, yeah, that's half out. There you go, she's out. All right, now we need to get a socket in there and get them undone, don't we? Now, what size are they? They look like quite small ones. Where's our little socket set? Mm. That's the size. Oh, well, that's that size off. Is this side going to come undone? Yep. That one off. There's this one off. Now I'm going to scratch on this big end shell once I get this out. There we go. I'm going to scratch on there which orientation it is so I know which way to put it back on. So I don't want to get that muddled up because we want to get them matched when we put it back on. Now, some people use a paint pen. I'm not going to do that, because paint paint can come off. So I'm just going to scratch this side and make a note on a bit of paper that this has got to go back on the oil filler side. Let's have a look in there at that galley. What's she like? Do you know? Wipe that over with a cloth. I'll tell you what, she's, yeah, that's, that's actually not bad at all. I'll tell you, for World War II, that's <laughs> not bad at all. So I think that can stay, no problem. Oh, that crank looked brilliant as well. Right, let's see if we can pull the piston out of this thing. That shouldn't be too hard, because she's loose. Right, that's still stuck to that crankshaft, isn't it? Right, that's now dropped off. Excellent. So let's get this piston pushed out. Come on. Come 
Come on. There we go. There we go. There's our piston and rings out of there. Let's give them a wipe as well so we can see what's going on. Have we got any major scoring or marks on that piston? Look at that. Do you know there isn't any scoring or any marks on there at all? It's just a shame there's all that slop in it. It even looks clean. Even the rings are free, looks. Not as if the rings are all seized up. The rings are free. Just a shame there was all that play in there. But I say, we have got a new piston coming. There we go. So, here's our engine stripped down. There we go. I'll get the camera now and you can have a look. Our governor weights. They're all in there and free, aren't they? Yes, governor slip ring all work. She's rocking on them valves. <laughs> Excellent. There we go. Let me just wipe my hands and then we'll get you off the tripod and you can have a look inside this engine. There, look how clean she is in there. And there is our crankshaft journal. That is not copper or anything, that is just oil on there. Let me just get a metal screwdriver and gently rub it across the surface. You can you can see that's not scratchy or notchy at all. Perfectly smooth, which is good. So yeah, that crankshaft, I think we'll go again. There we go. We have got a slight bearer noise in there, you know. How easy is it to change them bearings? So I think that bearing is noisy. Is that going to be major headache? That won't come out of this side, will it? And we've got to have this off. Do we do we take this pulley off? Risk damaging that, getting it off. We've had the flywheel off, we've then got to take the stator off and the side plate of the engine off and then the whole crank comes out which would allow us to change that bearing. Do we do that or do we leave well alone? Do you know, I think we're going to leave that well alone for a bit. If she's really noisy when she's running, we can always just pop the engine back off, because it's easy. This whole job has took, what, 46 minutes, look. So, we can always take it off and change it if we must. There's no up and down play in there. No in and out movement. So, she got no play in it. She's just a tad noisy on that bearing. But she might sort of quieten down once we get going. Anyhow, I think we're going to leave this video here for today because that's getting 45 minutes again. Which is a decent length of time. Let's have a look inside our, uh, our sump and our splash tray. Here we go. Look at all that sludge in there, look. Look at all that sludge built up in there. Look at that. Absolutely disgusting. So, yeah. Well, maybe somebody hasn't been in here this far then, because I'm sure if they'd have been in here, they would have cleared that sludge out. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, we can take that little tray out and clean all that up. I'll do all that off camera. You don't want to see all that. But there we go. That is inside the generator engine. The generator side of it, on the floor down here, we're leaving him well alone, 
because he looks good. You can even see them shiny copper brushes from up here. Look. <laughs> and there we go. That is going to be it for this video. Sorry, it's a bit boring. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for all your comments. I do read them all. It's just struggling to find the time to actually reply to everyone. So I do read every single one. I really do. And thank you very, very much. Somebody asked me for a list of the rallies I'm doing this year, a list of the shows. Well, I will compile a little list and then I'll do a video telling you guys of all the rally dates. Because I'm actually showing at the Game and Country Fair in about a month's time. I think it's about this time next month. So, yeah, we shall see. Right, bye-bye for now. Ha-ha!